Hello and welcome to the Goon and Talk back again with you guys for another show. You join me not in the usual surroundings. Uh, I'm away once again, uh, so apologies for the change of background, but uh, also going to stop you doing another 8am show to keep you guys up to date with what's been going on around Arsenal's transfers. So please make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new around here with those notifications turned on so you never miss a show. Uh, good morning, everyone in the chat. Good morning, Adam and Jose and Raheel and Tom and Lars. Uh, good morning to everyone uh, that's tuning in and continuing to make this part of your morning routine. Uh, thank you, everyone, that tuned in a, a little bit earlier yesterday at 7.30. We did an earlier show because my shift was beginning at 8. We're fine today because we've got a later shift doing the, the what was described as the graveyard shift at times, 3 to 11 o'clock tonight. Uh, and then tomorrow, of course, covering the game as Arsenal will face Manchester City. And interestingly, some news regarding that. Kevin De Bruyne not expected to be available for Man City due to an injury. So a little bit of a boost to give us that slight piece of hope that we always have going into Man City, which will eventually be crushed by the ultimate reality of how poor we can be when we play this club. But uh, fingers crossed we can get a result. Um, but let's jump straight into the news. And of course, do please vote for us uh, in the Football Content Awards. There was a comment on the show yesterday that was like, why is Tom always asking people to vote? Because we want to win. That's obviously why I want people to vote. So if you could vote, that'd be great because we really would like to win this. It would be fantastic. We're up against some really amazing content creators. So hopes aren't, you know, wildly uh, being overblown because uh, we're up against some great people. But uh, yeah, if you could vote for us, please do. If you have Twitter, you can vote there. If you have the internet, you can also vote on the internet. You can vote more than once through different platforms, through different, you know, uh, 3 or 4G and, and Wi-Fi. So just make sure you keep voting and uh, and help support the channel. So there you go. But anyway, let's go on to our first main story of the day, and it revolves around Sambi Lekonga, uh, who has been called up for the first time to the Belgian national squad, which is obviously a massive boost to him. And uh, just a couple of games in the Premier League for Arsenal, first opportunity to get a senior cap for Belgium, considering that's probably their, it's probably in my mind, their weakest area going forwards. You've got like Axel Witzel, of course, who's well into his 30s now. But that central midfield area is an area where they're going to need some youth pushing through. You've got Tielemans, of course, in his mid-20s. It'll be, uh, be with him. But a good partnership between Lokonga and Tielemans to come through to really solidify that midfield. The, the future could still very much be bright for Belgium, despite a lot of their golden era uh, ageing towards their late uh, and uh, their, their early 30s and late 20s, rather. So Lokonga coming through. You've got Doku at Ren as well. I'll probably expect him to move on in a couple of years' time because he's a, an exceptional talent. But Belgium still should be a force in the years to come, despite their, their golden generation getting that little bit older. Moving then on to uh, William Saliba. The French centre-back has also been called up, but not to the French senior squad, but for the first time to the French under-21s team. I believe it, it might not be the first time, um, but he's certainly involved this time in the under-21s. Uh, I don't know if there are people more in the, in the know than I am about that, if it's been his first time. But I did see a tweet this morning that I replied to. can't remember who it was, so apologies for not shouting you out. But they said there's a lot of hype around Saliba, and this is one of the first times he's breaking into the French under-21 squad, which, you know, if it was... A lot of other nations, maybe you'd be able to say that's a genuine critique. But when you consider that the senior French national team at centre-back has Varane, Lenglet, Kunda, Zuma and Kimpembe, and then the, <laughs> the under-21s had eligible to them previously, uh, Zagadou, Upamecano, Kanate, Malang Sar, uh, Badiashil, still players on there that I haven't even mentioned, like Evan Ndika, Fafana. It's a ridiculous group of talent that the French national team has. So the fact that Saliba's being considered... I think is a big show of his quality and actually uh, a big compliment to see him involved within that group. Moving then on to looking at Mikel Arteta and what he's been saying about transfers this summer and regarding ahead of the Manchester City game. He says, we don't know uh, about how much business that we might do. He says, we already have done a lot of things, ins and outs, a lot. I think it's 16 or 17 deals in total with some renewals, which is a lot of things. And there are still some things to do in the last few days because there are still some question marks and deals that can happen, but we will see. Fingers crossed it does turn out to be true. Willian, of course, though, he spoke specifically on him and said, we are having some conversations with him and the agent and we are evaluating the position that we're in at the moment, which is very open if you consider the fact that, of course, he's a player that uh, we've tried to keep 
not pr- behind closed doors, but it's not been able to keep behind closed doors. If you think he removed actually Arsenal from his Instagram profile recently, so it's it's a it's a deal that's coming out more publicly than maybe the club want, and that's maybe why Arta has been more open about it than he usually is with these types of deals. Now, looking at Kalasanac, interestingly, when asked if Kalasanac's involvement in the team against West Brom means that he will be staying, Arteta said no. It's an indication of every player that is with us, that is training and behaving the way that Sayad is. We have the possibility to give them minutes. We want to be fair because that's what we demand to all of the players. He's our player and we're treating him in exactly the same way. And then we will see what happens. Very interesting words if you consider how the likes of Meza Ozil never got minutes. The likes of Socrates didn't get minutes. Um, Mustafi started to fall away. Um, Saliba, of course, we know all about that. Um, the way in which he's given minutes to Kalasanac and to Ainsley Maitland-Niles, despite their futures not necessarily being, you know, all assured. I mean, it, it's probably a big compliment to Kalasanac in the way that he's performing and acting and uh, behaving, despite his future being very much uh, still uncertain at this point in time. Um, but going on to the possible outs that we will see, uh, Miguel Aziz is now expected to leave the club. I was quite critical of the fact that Aziz was not included in the West Brom squad. Completely out of the know that uh, Aziz would be moving in the next couple of days to Portsmouth. That does explain that. And so therefore you can hold your hands up and be like, well, it makes sense he wasn't involved in the squad because he was in the process of sorting out this deal to Portsmouth. So... Great move for him. Just getting in minutes this season away from the club at senior level is what you want to see. So we will be keeping track of that. I'll be making sure to do a report on him every month as we are with Saliba and Ballard and Tyrese John Jules and the whole of the youth team throughout the season. So make sure you're subscribed to get all that content. Uh, Yves Basuma, as we know, is a player that I know a lot of you guys really desperately want to see join the club this summer. But unfortunately, we have hit a little bit of a blow in this one as Liverpool along with Manchester United, are both pushing ahead of Arsenal in the race if they are going to sign in the last few days. Liverpool, in fact, have supposedly, according to, uh, according to a number of sources, actually have said that they are inquiring quite heavily uh, about Basuma in the final days of the summer window. Of course, Liverpool were linked with a move for Sal Miguez of Atletico Madrid, who looks more likely to move on to Chelsea right now. Another amazing bit of business for Chelsea. And so, therefore, because they're not looking like they're going to be getting Saul. Basuma could be next on the list. And so, therefore, that's why it's more likely that he will therefore move to Merseyside instead. Now, our final story of the day revolves around Kieran Trippier and his future and the fact that Atletico Madrid are seemingly resigned to losing him this window because they are already pursuing his replacement. A bid of under €10 million Euros has gone into Lille for Turkish international Zeki Celik, another player that was, of course, linked to Arsenal. And because of that, it looks more than likely that he will leave Kieran Trippier. But the problem for Arsenal is that they are not the favourites at this moment in time. And Manchester United are very much a preference with Champions League football, with a position in the team. When you consider the fact that Aaron Wan-Bissaka cost them £50 million, you'd think that maybe Trippier would choose Arsenal because he's likely to get more minutes because he's only up against players that you would consider aren't as good. But the problem is with this deal is that uh, a Champions League football and the last big move of your career to go to Manchester United, you've got the Spurs situation as well. It does make more sense for him to go to Manchester United rather than going to Arsenal, unfortunately. But I hope and I am praying that he does not do that and that we end up being the team that he gets. So there you go. That's all of today's news. Apologies that I'm being a little bit more quiet. I'm not the only one in the local area around that can probably hear me. So I'm not being as vocal as I usually am. So apologies for that. We will still answer some of your questions, though, before we wrap up. Guna72, thank you so much for becoming a member. Really appreciate that. And uh, and your continued support of the channel. Um, I do. And uh, he says, I've finally done it. I've enjoyed the content so much that I have to do it. Thanks, Guna. I really appreciate the support. That's really kind of you. Let's see what you guys are saying, though, in the chat box um, about any questions that you might have. And uh, it's it's very, very interesting when you look across kind of all of the deals that are going on around the the window in general, that we're seeing these huge deals for Ronaldo happen, Messi happen, and they've happened towards the end. It does give me that little tiny bit of hope that we might see some deals move ahead in Arsenal's direction with what's left. 
especially regarding outgoings because of players like Nketiah, players like Kalasinac. Clubs have been waiting until the end of the window to make a move for these players because they know they can get them on the cheap. Um, but let's go into the chat and see what questions we've got. Tono says, Tom, if Trippier is not an option for us, do you think, uh, or rather, who do you think, would come in? Another right back or a centre midfielder? I would hope that we would go for a right back, Tono, but I'm not sure that we would. I think that we maybe look to stay with what we've got, especially if Hector Bellerin remains an Arsenal player, because that's always going to be the crux of the situation. If Hector Bellerin remains a player at Arsenal, it's very unlikely that they will move for a player because they know they've got enough cover and enough is not enough for what we want. We want to see an upgrade. We want to see improvement. We want to see something better than we've already got. But the issue is, is that you can't legislate to bring in a fifth right back when you've already got four options, arguably five already with Ben White that can play there too. So that's it. Uh, Bilal, yes, there will be a loan report of Aziz at Portsmouth this season. I will get to work immediately on finding a Portsmouth expert uh, journalist to, to keep you guys up to date with how that loan move goes every single month. So don't you worry. Um, Matthew says, why are we ignoring the LR opportunity? Probably the same reason that a lot of clubs are. Um, unfortunately, for people that want him, a lot of clubs have the option to sign our He's available. They want to sell him. He could leave and they're not looking like they're going to be going for him. So I I personally don't have too much of an issue with with the idea of not getting Awar because, you know, my issues with, with the deal anyway. I think he's got attitude problems. I think that he's inconsistent. Um, but if you said that we were going to be getting him as kind of a, a bonus on top of what we've already got, I'd be okay with it. But I I'm not... I'm not wildly concerned if we don't end up getting Hussein Awa, but I have gone over that quite a lot, as you guys know. Uh, Said says, I hope that we go for Basuma or Mariba instead of Awa. Don't want to have a player with a reported attitude issue. Now, we should probably clarify this. It's been more so that his attitude, it's not like an attitude problem in the sense of, like, he's a bad egg, or, or like, you know what I mean. Um, it's more of an attitude issue because the, the club just don't really see him as kind of the most committed um, player in the group and that he lacks kind of that drive uh, to push him forwards to better things. That's that's kind of the issue with Awa. Um, Will says, still confident about your three signed players after Nuno and Sambi? Um, yeah, well, yeah, I said after after Ben White, I thought we would sign three players. One of them was Erdogan, one of them was Ramsdale, and I feel like we've still got enough in the tank to bring one more player in. We will see, though. We might we <laughs> we might not end up getting that, but fingers crossed. I am still confident at this stage. So, yeah, one more was my prediction. So I'm hoping that that one more is Trippier uh, or a right back. I think that has to be the, the priority. Uh, Vishal says, given the squad that we have, do you think we need Basuma or is he surplus? No, we absolutely need to upgrade on the central midfield area and Basuma definitely achieves that for us. So, yeah, absolutely we should be going for Basuma. Uh, Babs says, shouldn't we sign Awar now since he's on the cheap? It's more create, it's more creativity. He obviously brings something to our team. Look, I never should, I never ever would be on the side of the argument to say that you should bring in a player for the sake of it. Arsenal are a club that are going to be able to make money. They're a club that are going to be able to bring in more players in the future. Why rush into a deal that ultimately could backfire in a year's time and then we're lumbered with someone that we want to then sell on because it's not worked out? I'd rather that we were a little bit more sensible with how we approach players. And I don't really want to rush into a deal at the end of the window like we have done in the past. And it's landed us with players like Andre Santos and, and Danny Welbeck. And I know that Danny Welbeck wasn't the worst player in the world, but of course it never really worked out. And we could have gone for someone better if maybe we'd have waited a season. If you think about it, Danny Welbeck coming in at the end of that year, if we'd have waited a year, maybe we'd have been able to get someone better the following summer. So that for me is is is, is would have been a better deal and I wouldn't rush in to uh, a deal for Sam Awar whatsoever. Richard says, do you think Martinelli is good enough for the first team at football or does he need to go on loan? You know, I'd ne I wouldn't even be against a loan for Martinelli. I think that he needs to play week in, week out, and I think he's going to struggle to do that at Arsenal this season. I hope he gets opportunities if he stays. But a loan deal genuinely wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for him, I don't think. Um, Yor says, if we get Basuma, doesn't that push the development of Sambi even further? Xhaka even if he doesn't start, will always be next in line. It could do your, but to be honest, I'm never, I've, I've lost my sentiment for this idea of, of allowing the route for young players. Arsenal are in a position where they can't afford to play eight, 21 and unders 
we need quality. We need improvement now. If Sambi's good enough, Sambi will start. If we can add a better player, add a better player. Partey's going to be going off to the African Cup of Nations and has got injuries throughout his career. Basuma may or may not go to the AFCON. We, I, it's really difficult to know with him because of the whole history he has with playing for his national side. So we don't know there. If there's more chance to get more quality and upgrade on what we've already got, I would do it if that player is the right person. Bengatesh, Tini News is the latest about him is that it was just a knock or like a cramp, so it wasn't a serious injury. He still could play against Manchester City. Uh, and then, uh, sorry, Matt G says, I'm not 100% sold on Awa, but for 20 million, wouldn't it be a good investment? Surely even after one year in the Prem, he'd still be valued higher at 20. It depends how he plays. You think about Ainsley Maitland-Niles, offered around 20 million year after. We're struggling to get anything for him. So there's no guarantees, Matt, about price going up whatsoever. Uh, Thracian says, if we put 40 million on the table for Locatelli, surely we have cash back cash in the bank to do more. I agree with you, Thracian. I brought this up. I thought if we put that amount of money on the table for, for Locatelli, which was 40 million euros, we would have scope to bring in another midfielder. I don't know why we've not done it. It's it's really strange. Uh, Vuk, any news on Saka? Is he fit? He's being assessed ahead of the game uh, on Saturday, tomorrow. It was He was limping after the game uh, in midweek. Hopefully, he's fine. We do have enough quality available now with Odegaard, Smith, Rowe, Pepe could be the three behind the Bamiang. So there's always that. So fingers crossed, it should be fine. Um, I'm going to wrap things up there because I've got a low battery warning <laughs> coming off on my screen. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this short show. Apologies, I am away this weekend. So, uh, well, just Friday night and uh, rather Thursday night away till there. But I'll be back tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Uh, with the next show. There may be another show a little bit later on this afternoon before I start my shift, uh, depending on availability and stuff. But uh, please make sure you drop a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new and please vote for us in the FCAs. Absolute pleasure, guys, as always. And as always, up the arsenal.